May your hearts be touched as you see the truth of who you are. Brothers and sisters of the light, I welcome you to partake in this wisdom. Read and be still within your being. All is well with you. Thoth the Atlantean. Know that you are loved, welcomed, and embraced. The words in this text will bring you comfort in times of need and in times of joy. Be still and know. You have all you need already written on the walls of your heart. Shishet, the divine counterpart of Thoth, fairy godmother of Egypt, lady of light. Both of these prayers were translated and channeled by Rebecca Marina Messenger in her book, The Secret Key to the Emerald Tablets. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Please hit that subscribe button and give us a like. As always, a very, very heartfelt thank you to all of our patrons and our producers here on Esoteric Atlanta. Without you guys, we seriously would not be able to do what we do. So I appreciate each and every one of you from the bottom of my heart. A big, big, big thank you. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we are going to be continuing our deep dive into the Emerald Tablets with Tablet 3, The Keys of Wisdom. Now, if you missed the first three episodes we've done on the Emerald Tablets, we covered Tablet 1, Tablet 2, and we did an introduction episode as well. I will put all three of those episodes down in the description box below. Now, normally we are working strictly from Doriel's translation of the Emerald Tablets as well as his commentary, but today we're also going to be looking at a second translation and commentary well, and that is from Rebecca Marina Messenger in her book, over the third tablet. Now, I've talked about this book before. This was actually the first book I ever got on the Emerald Tablets when I didn't really know a whole lot about them. And this is basically like a um, quiet time type of book. If you've ever done like um, a lot of people who come from a Christian background will do like quiet times in the morning where they'll have like books to help them go through the Bible and answer questions. Well, this is the same thing with the third tablet that was created by Rebecca Marina Messenger. And she actually is a channeler and channeled both Thoth for this and where Thoth gives a current translation as well as Thoth's wife, Shishat. Now we talked a little bit about Shishat in the first ever episode, but I wanted to again briefly remind everybody who she is, who she was, because we understand the concept of twin flames on this journey, on this channel. We've talked about them a lot and we've also talked about the divine feminine and the divine masculine energies on this channel. And yes, every single human being carries both energies, but oftentimes when you have these huge teachers that come into the world. They also have a counterpart, a female counterpart like Yahshua and Magdalene. Well, Thoth had Shishat. So who, who was Shishat? Who was his wife, his counterpart, his twin, twin flame? Well, she was also a teacher as well. She was the goddess of writing, wisdom, and knowledge. Her name means the female scribe. And if you remember when we first talked about Thoth, he was kind of the, the father of scribes. So here's his feminine counterpart, the female version of this practice of writing, of scribing. Her symbols are often a tablet and a star. And when she was living in human form, she was Elnor of Atlantis. And as Elnor of Atlantis in her human form, she was the leader of the Atlantean women warriors of light. So once again, this to me is super, super interesting. This whole idea of the sons of light, the children of light, the Essenes, which were the priest and priesthood of Isis, were also called the sons of light. And again, the Essenes, being the priest and priesthood of Isis, come directly from these, these Egyptian studies. And we know that Thoth supposedly was either, that Yahshua was either an incarnation of Thoth or Thoth was one of Yahshua's teachers. So it's interesting that uh, his counterpart, Shishat, also in her human form, form Elnor, was a warrior of light as well. We know the Magdalene is also considered to be a bit of a warrior. Uh, Magdalene is a feisty, feisty broad. You know, she's out there fighting demons. We saw this in the Sophia Code where she could shapeshift into a lion to slaughter, literally slaughter demons. And so I just wanted to point that out because I thought that was super interesting and super cool. So let's start looking at the breakdown of the third tablet, the Key of Wisdom. 
thought starts by saying, I thought the Atlantean, give of my wisdom, give of my, my knowledge, give of my power. Freely I give to the children of men, get that, give that they too might have wisdom to shine through the world from the veil of night. Wisdom is power and power is wisdom. One with each other, perfecting the whole. Be thou not proud, O man, uh, in thy wisdom. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken, for truth is like sunlight shines above all. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage, a fetter that binds the darkness of men. Let me read that again. Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage. A fetter that binds the darkness to men. So if, you, if there's anything in your life that's causing you fear, whether it be mainstream media or your church, that fear is purposely being put out there to bind you to the darkness. Let me read that again from Thoth, because this is powerful. Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage. A fetter that binds the darkness to men. Follow thine heart during thine lifetime. Do thou more that is commanded of thee. Work. Do more. Follow your heart and do more that is asked of you. When thou hast gained riches, follow thine heart. For all these are no avail if thine heart be weary. So basically, you can be the richest person in the world, but it's not going to do you a shit ton of good if you don't have a pure heart. Makes sense, doesn't it? Let me start over again with that. For when thou hast gained riches, follow thou thine heart. For all these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart. It is abhorrent to the soul. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. If thou go among men, make for thyself love the beginning and the end of the heart. This is a big one. I underline this because we know this. If you ever studied a deep, deeply studied spirituality or any of the lineages of spirituality, you know that the concept of having a teacher is imperative. It's imperative. It's compulsory that you have a teacher. You can't just stumble upon spirituality without a guide. And that's what he's saying here. They that are guided go not astray. But they that are loose cannot find the straight path. Why is this? This is because of the ego. Many people confuse their intuition with their ego. Because the ego is artful that way. When you have a teacher, the teacher can call you on your bullshit. That's why teachers are important. They call you on your excuses that's being made up by the ego to help you really work through your shit. We've talked about this in the first two tablets, the idea of shadow work. He's talking a lot about this. Those that can lead into the darkness and work through it, those are the courageous ones. You can only do that, though, when you have a teacher. Because the ego, we know from the people doing the 30-day shadow work challenge, this shit's hard. And when painful stuff starts coming up, the, the one thing you want to do is run. And if you don't have a teacher to say, stay, look at me, stay, work through it. You're going to go, you're not going to be on any path. You're just going to be like, you know, flopping around. It's going to be a flop shop with no guidance. You're going to fall deeper and deeper and deeper into the tricks of the ego. So let me read this again. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. This is why I tell you guys, like, I have to go back to India every 18 months. My, I still have a teacher. There's never going to be a time in my life where I don't have a teacher, where I don't have someone that I'm not accountable to. That I'm account I have to be accountable to them. I can't teach if I don't have a teacher. Do not go to a tarot card reader if they don't have a teacher. Do not go to a Reiki healer if they do not have a teacher. This is super important. And if Thoth has a whole verse on this in the Emerald Tablets alone, 
This is how important this is. Do not be ignorant. Do not be stupid. Do not go to someone to do a reading on you or do a healing on you if they don't have a teacher that they are currently, currently, currently accountable to. That should be the very first question you ask your teacher, your healer, your card reader. First thing you should ask them is, who's your teacher? If they say they don't have one, my advice, don't pay them for anything. It's a scam. That's my advice. Emmy, my friend who does Reiki, you should see her file. All the teachers she has. Look at Tamara. You see all the, the, the things in the back of her wall? How many teachers has she had? This is important. So Tamara, Emmy, Stephanie, myself, we all have teachers. That's to be the very first thing you ask someone. Who's your teacher? Shanti from Aquarius Rising Africa. She has a teacher. She spent time in India just like I did. Okay, this is super important. Let me read this again. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. If thou go among men, make for thyself love the beginning and end of the heart. If one cometh unto thee for counsel, let him speak freely, that the thing for which he hath come to thee may be done. If he hesitates to open his heart to thee, it's because thou the judge doeth wrong. So do you see what he's saying there? If someone comes to you for advice, but that person can't really speak freely with you and tell you everything, you're the one who's doing wrong, not the person seeking advice from you. All right, so let's quickly look over here at Doriel's translation, and then we're going to look. All right, speaking of teachers, mine just contacted me, so I just, I just sent a quick email back to him. It's like he could hear me hear me talking about this. So now let's go back and look at, I pause it for a moment. So if it sounds weird with a cut, that's why. So um, let's go back and look at what Doriel has to say about what we just went through in this tablet. The key of wisdom containing some of the uh, presets given by Thoth to the barbarians, the children of men of Chem. So those of us who went through the veil of amnesia and can't remember we're Atlanteans um, was given so that the key keys of light should not be lost to man. Wisdom and power walk hand in hand. Without both, either is useless and not existent. For power is not created without wisdom. And wisdom is only gained through the development and use of power, which is scary, right? So this has to be really understood so that moving forward, we don't end up with another cabal. All right. The proud person is not wise, but foolish. For pride causes the proud one to reject learning. For he measures all things by his own rules and standards. So uh, what's the saying? A wise person says nothing. Or what? It, no, it goes, a wise person once said nothing, I believe. You know, a fool is the one that can talk in circles. And if you study narcissistic abuse, that's what they do. They do uh, word salads. They talk around the topic without giving you a direct answer. It's a form of gaslighting. You can see that in some of the infiltrators here on YouTube where they talk around stuff. So he's saying it here. He's calling that out here. The proud person is not wise, but foolish. That's also narcissism, pride, narcissism, arrogance. And there's a difference, right? There's a difference in being in between being confident and being ego egotistical. I'm confident in what I know spiritually because I've had some really good teachers and I've worked really hard and I want to share this knowledge. I'm confident in this knowledge. But there are people out there who are Mr. T. He's confident. He's not egotistical. He's confident. But there's a lot of people out there who are very egotistical. That's not wise. That's foolish. The proud person is not wise, but foolish. There's a few uh, channelers who are infiltrators who are very egotistical, very proud, very arrogant. Red flag. Red flag. The proud person is not wise, but foolish. For pride causes the proud one to reject learning. Pride causes the proud one to reject learning. Knowledge is power. Knowledge protects. And knowledge is infinite. We're always continually learning. I'm con That's why I'm reading these things on this channel with you guys. Because we're learning together. 
I've learned so much in the last two years. So that makes sense to me. For pride causes the proud one to reject learning. For he measures all things by his own rules and standards. Silence is golden. Talking about evil turns the creative force upon it and gives it life and actuality. And that's why Tamara spoke about this in our last episode. Stop talking about what the evil people are doing. When we talk about what's happening with these things or these things over and over and over again, we're just giving power to it. We have to heal ourselves now. We have to move into that area of healing ourselves, of, of cleaning us up so that these negative things can't really exist anymore. But the more we talk about them, the, the, the more power they gain. When you are dealing with a narcissist with like narcissistic abuse, any therapist will tell you the best way to deal with a narcissist, even through the smear campaigns, even through everything they do to you. You stay silent. You ignore them. Because eventually they get tired of trying to play with you if you're stonewalling them and they go find a new victim because narcissists always have to have a victim. They have to always have to be getting that supply right from a victim, that narc supply. And that's so hard to do. Trust me, I know there's so many times I want to scream to the rooftop everything that's been stolen from me, the massive amounts of money that have been stolen from me. But, you know, I have an FBI case going on. There's a, a, the FBI are involved now. The military is involved. And I just got to let them handle it. And I've got to move forward. Because if I don't let them handle it, then it's just going to exacerbate the issue. I hold the power here. Because I hold the truth. Right? The arrogance of the of the evil person will eventually be their own downfall. Downfall, right? Does that make sense? It makes sense to me what he's saying. We also see this in mainstream media with like Dr. F. Right? All these people that were duped by him, they're so prideful that they won't admit it. Yeah? That they made a mistake. Some people have admitted they made a mistake, and that's amazing. When you can admit you made a mistake, awesome. Let me read this all again, because this is super important what he's saying here. The proud person be not wise, but the fool, but foolish. For pride causes the proud one to reject learning. For he measures all things by his own rules and standards. Silence is golden. Talking about evil turns the creative force upon it and gives it life and actuality. To attempt to rise beyond the law brings its own punishment, for nothing is beyond the law. And the law here is capitalized, and we're going to get deeper into that. And the one who attempts to operate against the law breaks the law against himself. What's one of the biggest laws? Consent. The more you break somebody else's consent, the more it works against you. Fear should not be allowed to enter self. Neither should we create fear in others, for fear is bondage. If within our hearts we have kindness, then those of, of like harmony are attracted to us. Everybody on my channel is super kind. So, yeah. If this is not the case, then, then, then that one is ruled by disorder. This is, again, why we're doing the Shadow Work Challenge. So, so if, we, if we ourselves are healed... If we heal our own wounds, our own shadow side, then what are they saying? Then we will be ruled. We will be vibrationally calling in leaders who are good and ethical. But if we don't heal our own wounds, if we ignore the shadow side of ourselves and we don't heal ourselves, then vibrationally, we are going to continue to be ruled by a cabal. That is why telling someone to sit back, eat your popcorn and watch the movie is terrible. Because if you sit back, eat your popcorn, and continue to watch a movie, we're just going to keep, we're going to have the new world order and tomorrow if that keeps happening. Because that's vibrationally what we're asking for. It's all about energy and vibration. This makes sense to me. This is like common sense to me. But let me know if this is confusing to you and I can try to explain deeper because we are asking for what we receive. So if we are wounded, are in a bad place and we have not healed our wounds and we are still reactionary to our wounds, then the people around us are going to be really shitty people. And the people that rule us are going to be really shitty people. But when we start to heal ourselves, it's like when people go on a shadow work or a healing journey, a lot of times their lives fall apart. A lot of times when you people who start this journey will get end up getting divorced or they'll have to lose a bunch of friends. 
because vibrationally you change. And so vibrationally, when you start to heal and you go down into the underworld and come back up again, the people that were attracted to you before, when you, you when your wounds were active, all of a sudden vibrationally can't match with you anymore when your wounds are healed. Yeah? So there's a lot of, it's like uh, Patabi Joyce would say, new body is making, but old body, old body got to break first. New life is making, but old life has to break first in order to bust through, in order for the butterfly to pop through that cocoon, right? Okay, let's see here. The commands of the master are, the commands of the master within are the ones to be followed. So within your gut, do not attempt to objectively do more. Riches are means to an end, not the end. So we need to keep money where it should be. It's just means to an end. Yeah. Um, when the material needs are supplied, the mind and the hearts of the ancient should lead into higher realms. So when you're able to financially be stable, that should be a way for you to then do more spiritually. Yeah. So that's all money is. It's just a means to an end, not the end. It is necessary to have a guide while on the path. Otherwise, one is led astray, attempting to find an easier way. We talked a lot about this a few minutes ago. Super important again. Everybody must have a teacher. There's no exception. There's no exception to this. No exception. Thoth had a teacher. Thoth spoke about his teacher in the first tablet. Yahshua had a teacher. Magdalene had a teacher. I've had many teachers. I will. I will. Until the day I die, I will have a teacher. Guarantee you that. So I understand that. I don't want to be led astray. I want to keep moving forward. I want to make sure my ego does not move forward with me. But stays in its proper place of providing the friction I need in order to move forward. Yeah? Love is the beginning and the end of the path. For love lies oneness. Thoth gave this especially to the tribes to inoculate the teachings of brotherhood and oneness. The person who comes in trouble finds relief in expressing himself. If he is hesitant, it is because the one who he has come to has flaw in his own nature, which is rep which repulses. Yeah. So if someone needs to vent something and they don't feel comfortable coming to you to vent, it's your problem, not theirs. Yeah. He goes on to say, this statement is of great value. Extravagant speech always shows lack of balance and is harmful to either speak in such a manner or listen for most people are easily thrown off balance. Perfection is the only goal. You should not be satisfied with anything short of it. It is only lack of knowledge which prevents one from pertaining the veil behind which lies wisdom. All right. Let me look over here again now. We're going to pause there from Doriel for a minute, and we're going to look at what um, Rebecca Marina Messenger has to say as she channels through Cha, uh, Thoth, Cha, Thoth and Shishet. Okay, so she writes here, chapter one, Thoth gives his wisdom from the Emerald Tablets 3, verse 1. So she gives the original translation, and this is the, 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 the modern commentary that she's channeling from Thoth now. Wisdom and power must go together, for power without wisdom is a destructive force. I'm ready to teach anyone who will be still and listen. Listen. All that is needed is already there on the walls of your heart. It is in the stillness that knowledge is revealed. It is when one realizes that one is already divine. That true power begins to emerge. It takes courage to claim this inner power. It takes cur courage to claim your divinity. It takes courage to buck the system that is currently in place. The practice of always looking outside of yourself for answers. So this is super important. Okay. He's saying it takes courage to find your divin divinity. It takes courage to buck the system that is currently in place. The system that is currently in place is the practice of always looking outside of yourself for the answers. Boom, 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 boom. Straight from the horse's mouth. So even in our own little truth or community, we have people who are looking outside of themselves for the answers. They're looking to Mr. T. They're looking towards the Kennedys. They're looking towards the truthers. They're look, looking towards the military back channel. They're sitting back eating popcorn, waiting for somebody else outside of them to give them the answers. But that is not the path of the Great Awakening. That is the path of the matrix. So even though you're a truther, if you are relying on somebody else to 
fix this shit for you, you're still in the matrix. Okay, so he's saying it takes courage to look inside yourself for the answers. This is why the shadow work channel was presented on my channel. And this is why in January, we're going to do a 60 day shadow work challenge because you are the person that has to save yourself. I have to save myself. Nobody else can save me but me. And so if we all start saving ourselves and we stop giving power to the controllers, to the matrix system, we stop, we stop relying on the Kennedys. We stop relying on the Galactic Federation or, or Mr. T and we work on ourselves. Then we're the storm. Then the storm is upon us. And that's why I'm going to remind you again. Majority of the people out there saying sit back and watch popcorn. It's a movie are infiltrators. They want you bound to the darkness. They want you relying on the same matrix system. Why? Because that's the matrix system that they serve. 90%. Of truthers serve lucifer they're part of the cabal they have no problem lying to you look for the answers inside yourself listen to your gut find a teacher that you trust to help you work through your shit whether that teacher is a yoga teacher a reiki teacher um, a therapist that you trust a life coach doesn't matter ask that person to see their resume Ask that person who their teachers are so that you stay on a path of surrender to your own divinity so that our vibration changes, so the world's vibration changes. The power is within you. It's been within you this whole freaking time. This is why I remember the very first tablet, Toth says, Thoth says, I'm writing these for you, for us this time. To remind you, the answers are not going to lie in the Trump family. They're not going to lie in the Kennedy family. They're not going to lie in the military back channel. They're not going to lie with the Galactic Federation. The answers lie within you. They always have. And the minute you figure that out is the minute everything flips. That's powerful, isn't it? All right. He goes on to say, it is my prayer that you will tune into your own vast storage of knowledge and allow the wisdom to, to come forth. You see, we, were, we are already connected. You are intimately connected to every light being that comes into your awareness. There is no need for feeling less than. There is only a need for taking time each day to be quiet and to allow the wisdom to burst, but, burst forward. And now this is what gets really interesting. Now she channels Shishat, Thoth's wife. This is her words now. It gives me great joy to be joining with Thoth in this transmission. Yes, it was he, Thoth, who wrote the Emerald Tablets over 36,000 years ago. Yet it was I, Shishat, who gave him the strength and support needed to keep returning again and again to be your teacher. Because men cannot do it alone. Women cannot do it alone. The yin and the yang have to work together in the perfect whole. In the days of Atlantis, I was known as Eleanor, the leader of Atlantean warrior, women of light. In the Egyptian times that Thoth and I shared together, I became known as Shishat. We partnered to do many wonderful things for the people of those times. All right, chapter two, wisdom can come from unexpected places. From tablet three, verse two. So this is when Thoth says, Be thou not proud, O man, in thy wisdom. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. In modern translation, in channeling, Thoth says, there is no need to get into false pride because you have discovered your wisdom. You can learn from the ignorant as well as the wise. That's very true. It is when one gets puffed up with self-importance that you miss the gift of understanding. Even the most foolish person has some nugget of wisdom. Then again, if a person who is wise comes to you and your heart resonates with their wisdom, be still and listen. Their wisdom will awaken further understanding in you, for there are many key masters on earth today. Even the most foolish person may have a soul contract to be part of your further awakening. We call those karmics. Those are karmics. People who are not at your level of understanding, but they offer you friction as a soul contract to further awaken you. Always listen with your heart. Recognize the truth only with your heart, for only the heart can be trusted. Shishat says, Well spoken, my beloved thought, yet I would add another aspect. Seek not to find wisdom entirely from the lips of men or those in authority. 
ask and pray heed to the most humble of maidens. For in the heart of a woman, there is much tenderness, much understanding that is not brought about by false pride. Women have, women have long sought to be recognized and heard. Great good and much, advan much advancement can be achieved when equal value is given to the female as given to the male. United wisdom of both male and female leads to balanced understanding. This contributes to the forward progress of humanity. Chapter 3, from Tablet 3, verse 3. Goth says in the original translation, Keep thou not silent, we will have spoken for truth like sunlight shines above all. In modern commentary, Thoth says, Evil words are like curses spewing forth from the lips of the unwise. When you hear evil words spoken and feel that knowing in your gut, speak up in defense of the light. You know how to recognize when one is speaking curse like words of evil as you quietly speak your truth light shall prevail there is a chance for others listening to hear the truth truth resonates lies and evil judgment bring a person's spirit down here is a simple measure of truth do the words spoken lift you up or do the words spoken bring you down she shat contributes her wisdom you have a chance to to right the wrong spoken by those who have spread lies or harsh judgment you can be the one to come to the fence of a victim of untruth. When a, gossip when a gossip monger is confronted by a light warrior of truth, they will quickly back down for a gossip monger only gains power when they are heard and agreed with. So this is another reason why it is really bad to draw tarot cards on people without their consent. First of all, you cannot do anything without your consent, with someone's consent. And if you're pulling tarot cards on another person without, with, without asking their permission, you're not going to get accurate answers. But second of all, it leads to gossip. A lot of these big tarot card channels that are reading all these things on people in the public eye, they're just gossip channels. They're not truth or channels. First of all, none of their predictions have ever come true ever like ever so they're not tapping into any type of truth whatsoever they're just creating gossip which is bringing the vibration down but they're doing it on purpose because they're infiltrators so once you know better you do better of course correct so let me read that again when a gossip monger is confronted by a light warrior of truth they will quickly back down for a gossip monger only gains power when they are heard and agreed with when you agree with them, you're consenting to the darkness. Evil serves up more evil, and yet let us have mercy on the ones spewing gossip. It is only due to their lack of self-confidence that they turn to sensational gossip to attract attention. Many of those who speak evil, evil could be plagued by chaos entities. These beings always seek to stir up more turmoil to feed upon. Hence why they're shape-shifting on camera. You can speak your truth without being drawn into the heated dispute by using your God-given gift of discernment. All right. Tablet 3, verse 4. He who's overstepped with the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. And Thoth's commentary in modern English, the natural laws of the universe are in place for safety and the evolution of mankind, animals, plants, um, and the entire solar system. Here are the 12 laws that always apply. So I told you we were going to get deeper into this when we were first looking at this. So let's go deeper. The law of div divine oneness. We are all one and interconnected. The law of vibration. All particles of all substances are in constant movement. The law of correspondence. Patterns constantly repeat themselves throughout the universe on both large and small scales. Laws of attraction. Like always attracts like. Laws of inspired action. Actively pursue your goals when inspiration strikes you. True inspiration is always followed by a surge of energy. The law of perpetual transmission of energy. Everything is constantly changing. Some changes are not noticed as they are occurring at a cellular or atomic levels. They are changing nonetheless. The laws of cause and effect. All actions have a corresponding reaction. So number seven, that's the laws of karma. Karma is action and reaction. The laws of compensation. You will receive back what you give out. In kind, you reap what you sow. Nine, the law of re re rel relativity. Nothing is either bad or good until it is compared to something else. You may consider yourself poor until you compare yourself to a homeless person. Perception, right? Laws of polarity. Everything has an opposite. Scarcity helps you to appreciate abundance. Dark helps you to appreciate light. The law of rhythm. 
All things occur in cycles. Nothing is permanent. The law of gender. There are two major types of energy. <laughs> I laugh because the liberals are going to hate this. There are two major types of energy. Yin, yang, male, female. You can activate the law of gender more fully by using your imagination. Tablet 3, verse 5. The original translation says, Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage. A fetter that binds darkness to men. We spoke heavily about this a few minutes ago. So now let's see what, what his modern commentary say, says. Do not be the cause of striking fear into the hearts of man or beast. Fear causes loss of liability, and it is the opposite of freedom. Fear keeps all in a space of darkness. In darkness, one cannot thrive. Shishat says, there are those who seek to rule by instilling fear in the hearts and minds of others. There are those who seek to rule by instilling fear in the hearts and minds of others. Hello, MSNBC. Hello, CNN. Hello, ABC. Hello, CBS. Hello to some truthers out there. You're getting called out. You're trying to grab, grab power by making people feel vulnerable by their fears. Hello, church. Let's read that one more time for those in the back who didn't hear. Those who seek to rule by instilling. There are those who seek to rule by instilling fear in the hearts and minds of others. This is not of the light and no longer will be tolerated. And she put that, oh girl, she put that in bold. She said, this is not of the light and it will no longer be tolerated. It is now time for the warriors of light to rise up and say no more. No more. No more. Those who seek to control by fear tactics are insecure in their own power. Yes, we can have mercy on them and pray for their highest outcomes. However, it is up to each individual to proclaim their own sovereignty. Each of us carries the light of divinity within. The light can no longer be overcome by the spirit of fear for those seeking to control. Fear is the opposite of love. Seek love and mercy, and long shall be the days of your life. Happy shall be your heart. True wealth begins and ends with the capacity to love. Or what about all those truther channels that are like, you better buy your gold now. You better buy your silver now before you're broke in the new timeline. What the fuck? Every time I hear a truther say that, I want to be like, stop it. Stop it. And if you're a truther that's saying that to people, how fucking arrogant of you. I mean, maybe that's why all my money was stolen so that you guys could buy more gold and silver. I don't know. That's up for the FBI to figure out. It's their, it's their case now. Most people right now are struggling just to pay their fucking rent. To put food on the table. How dare you? claim to be of the light and yet you're trying to fucking scare people about not having gold or silver about not being able to afford in the new timeline shame on you just so you guys know we're going to be fine in the new timeline you're going to be fine it doesn't matter how much gold or silver you have you're going to be fine you're going to be fine don't worry don't worry I literally have military contacts. You're going to be fine. Don't listen to the fear mongering. Okay? Trust me, you're going to be fine. Tablet 3, verse 6. Follow thine heart during thy lifetime. Do thou more than is commanded of thee. This is the, now we're going to get to the modern com uh, channeling from Thoth. Follow after the true desires of your heart. All that you're, you, you desire deeply in your heart is that which you plan before this physical incarnation. What do you want to be? What does your heart want you to be? Do you want to be a dancer? Do you want to be a Reiki master? Do you want to be an artist? Follow that. You want to be a singer? Follow it. Maybe you have light codes in your voice. Yeah? You will always be steered in that direction that your soul is longing for as long as you follow your heart. Do not try to get away with doing as little as possible. You will feel like a cowardly cheat if you live your life this way. You will feel like a cowardly cheat. Um, I, I have the propensity to overwork at times, but I get what she's saying there. When you go the extra mile doing more than that was even asked of you, true sensations of joy and accomplishment will be yours. This leads to a sense of satisfaction of self that raises your vibration like nothing else. You will hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, seeing in your heart. Not only will you be satisfied with yourself, but you will know that your, cre your creator is satisfied as well. 
It is a great discovery when you find that the very thing that brings you joy, the things that you plan to accomplish in this lifetime, the path to fulfillment is in following the inner promptings of your heart. Just as your intuition may give you warnings via your gut, so your heart gives you promptings through the energies of joy. Follow your joy indeed. Resist feeling any guilt for daydreaming about having the desires of your heart. That which you give your attention to grows. Nothing can serve your spiritual growth better than to daydream, even fantasize about having the desires of your heart. When a task is required, requested of you, do more than are asked to do, as long as you can do it with a cheerful heart and a smile on your face. Going the extra mile and maintaining a cheerful heart springboards you into feeling of satisfaction with self. It is good to be able to pat yourself on the back sometimes and know that you did more that was required of you. Tablet 3, verse 7. When thou hast gained riches, follow thine heart, for these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart, it is important to the soul. So thought in modern translation says, even after you obtain riches, always return to following the path of your heart. Riches are of no value to anyone if the heart is not honored. Never hesitate to turn again and again into your inner wisdom. Your very soul will shrink away in honor if you go against the guidance of your heart. Allow the heart only the heart knows how to obtain true happiness. Be not fooled into thinking the pleasures can be found only in riches. Yes, money can improve the quality of your life and wealth is good to accumulate. Wealth without happiness is like sitting down to a scrumptious uh, banquet and having a miserable toothache that prevents you from enjoying it or even partaking. Shishat says, precious brothers and sisters, can you see the wisdom that my beloved thought has put forth? Allow yourself to feast upon the happiness that can only be found in your heart. If you find yourself in a place of not having happiness, turn again to the stillness within your heart. Do not try to move past the sadness into happiness until you have sat a while in communion with your heart. Even sadness has something to teach you. So since Tablet 3 is one of the heaviest of all the tablets and has full of such incredible wise information, especially for us on this journey now, we're actually going to break this up into two parts. So this is going to be the conclusion of Part 1. Next week, we'll get into the back part of, of, of the tablet three and so i'm going to leave this here give you guys some time to meditate on the first part of this tablet i will put links to rebecca's books down in the description box below if you want to get the actual if you want to get this actual book to to do she has she has actual exercises in the book for you to do yourself as well so i will put a link to that in the description box below um as well as our previous videos and to end this i'm going to do a full reading of the third tablets we will end on a full reading of the third tablet next week as well all right you guys let me know your thoughts and your opinions down in the comment section below i thought the atlantean give of my wisdom give of my knowledge give of my power freely i give to the children of men give that they too might have wisdom to shine through the world from the veil of the night wisdom is power and power is wisdom one with each other, perfecting the whole. Be thou not proud, O man, in thy wisdom. Discourse with the ignorant as well as the wise. If one comes to thee full of knowledge, listen and heed, for wisdom is all. Keep thou not silent when evil is spoken, for truth like the sunlight shines above all. He who oversteppeth the law shall be punished, for only through law comes the freedom of men. Cause thou not fear, for fear is bondage, a fetter that binds the darkness to men. Follow thine heart during thy lifetime. Do thou more that is commanded of thee. When thou hast gained riches, follow thou thine heart. For all these are of no avail if thine heart be weary. Diminish thou not the time of following thine heart. It is a hoard of the soul. They that are guided go not astray, but they that are loose cannot find a straight path. If thou go among men, make thyself love the beginning and end of the heart. If one cometh unto thee for counsel, let him speak freely, and that thing for which he hath come to thee may be done. If he hesitates to open his heart to thee, it is because thou, the judge, doest the wrong. Repeat thou not exaggerate speech, neither listen thou to it, for it is the utterance of one not in equilibrium. Speak thou not of it, so that he before thee may know thy wisdom. Silence is of great profit. 
and abundance of speech proteth nothing. Exalt not thine heart above the children of men, lest it be brought lower than the dust. If thou be great among men, be honored for knowledge and gentleness. If thou seeketh to know the nature of a friend, ask not his companion, but pass a time alone with him, debate with him, testing his heart by his words and his bearing. That which goeth into the storehouse must come forth, and the things that are thine must be shared with a friend. Knowledge is regarded by the fool as ignorance, and things that are profitable are to him hurtful. He liveth in death, it is therefore his food. The wise man lets his heart overflow, but keeps silent his mouth. O men, list to that voice of wisdom, list to the voice of light, Mysteries they are in the cosmos that unveiled fill the world with their light. Let he who be free from bounds of darkness first divine the material from the immaterial, the fire from the earth. For know ye that as earth descends to earth and also fire ascends unto fire and becomes one with the fire, he who knows the fire that is within himself shall ascend unto the eternal fire and dwell in it eternally. Fire, the inner fire, is the most potent of all forces, for it overcometh all things and penetrates to all things of the earth. Man supports himself only on that which resists. So earth must resist man, else he existeth not. All eyes do not see the same vision, for to one object appears of one form and color, and to a different eye of another. So also the infinite fire, changing from color to color, it never the same from day to day. Thus speak I thoth from my wisdom, for man is a fire burning bright through the night, never is quenched in the veil of the darkness, never is quenched by the veil of the night. Into men's heart I looked for my wisdom, found them not free from the bondage of strife. Free from the toils thy fire, O brother, least to be buried in the shadow of night. Hark ye, O man, and list to this wisdom. Where do name and form cease? Only in consciousness, invisible, an infinite force of radiant bright. The forms that ye create by brightening thy vision are truly effects that follow thy cause. Man is a star bound to a body until in the end he is freed through his strife. Only by struggling and toiling thy utmost shall the star within thee bloom out in new life. He who knows the commencement of all things, free in his star from the realms of night. Remember, O oh man, that all which exists is only another form of that which exists not. Everything that has being is passing into ye yet another being, and thou thyself are not an exception. Consider the law, for all is law. Seek not that which is not of the law, for such exist only in the illusion of senses. Wisdom cometh to all her children, even as they cometh unto wisdom. All through the ages the light has been hidden. Awake, O man, and be wise. Deep in the mysteries of life I have traveled, seeking and searching for that which is hidden. List ye, O man, and be wise. Far neath the earth's crust in the halls of Amente, mysteries I saw that are hidden from men. Oft have I journeyed the deep hidden passage, looked on the light that is life among men. There near the flower of life ever living, searched I the heart and the secrets of men, found I that man is but living in darkness, light of the great fire is hidden within. Before the lords of hidden Amente learned I the wisdom I give unto men, masters are they of the great secret wisdom brought from the future of infinity's end. Seven are they the lords of Amente, overlords they of the children of mourning sons of the cycles, masters of wisdom. Formed are not they as the children of men? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the titles of the masters of men. Far from the future, formless yet forming, came they as teachers of the children of men. 
Live they forever, yet not of the living, bound not to life, and yet free from death. Ruled they forever with infinite wisdom, bound yet not bound to the dark halls of death. Life they have lived, yet life that is not lived. Free from all are the lords of all. Forth from them came forth the Logos, instruments they of the power of all. Vast in their continents, yet hidden in smallness. Formed by a forming known yet unknown. Three holds the key of all hidden magic, creator he of the halls of the dead, sending forth powers shrouded with darkness, binding the souls of the children of men, sending the darkness, binding the soul force, director of negative to the children of men. Four is he who loses the power, Lord he of life to the children of men. Light is his body, flame his continents, freer of souls to the children of men. Five is the master lord of all magic, key to the word that resounds among men. Six is the lord of light, the hidden pathway, path of the souls of the children of men. Seven is he who is lord of the vastness, master of space and the key of the times. Eight is he who orders the progress, weighs and balances the journey of men. Nine is the father, vast he of continents, forming and changing from out of the formless. Meditate on the symbols I give thee. Keys are they, though hidden from men. Reach ever upward, O soul of the morning. Turn thy thoughts upward to the light and to life. Find in the keys of the numbers I bring thee, light on the pathway from life unto life. Seek ye with wisdom, turn thy thoughts inward, close not thy mind to the flower of light. Place in thy body a thought form picture, think of the numbers that lead thee to life. Clear is the pathway to he who has wisdom, open the door to the kingdom of light. Pour forth thy flame as a sun of the morning, shut out the darkness and live in the day. Take thee, O man, as part of thy being, the seven who are, but are not as they seem. Open, O man, have I my wisdom, follow the path and the way I have led. Master of wisdom, son of the morning, light and life to the children of men.